Good day and welcome to the Spot Rep Show. I'm your host, Limba Mopetami. We have Ryan Nyambe as well as Nkero Katwa today as the brave warriors geared to face Cameroon in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifier match on Friday. Well, of course, these and more coming up after the hit list. And after speaking about after the hit list, let's just quickly go for a short break and then head right into the hit list. Well, of course, now kicking off the show, excitement is building for this weekend's second edition of the PSG Capricorn Group Ride the Riches Mountain Bike Race, which will take place at Haya Lodge on the outskirts of Ventuk. Namibia has so far collected 26 medals after two days at the South African Sports Association for the Physically Disabled National Championships, which will conclude in Cape Town today. Namibia sent a team of 40 athletes to the Games in South Africa. Moving onwards, the MTC Namibian Netball Premiership kicks off over the weekend in Ochivarango. The league will see 12 clubs competing for top honours. The director of sports, Joanne Manuel, had this to say at the recent launch of the league. Of the league. So have a listen to this. These opportunities are not only created for our ladies to play netball, but they are also facilitating employment for our players. In NTP5, we are articulating that we should contribute 2% of employment to the sport. And what netball is doing is helping us to reach that milestone. We are grateful that football is back because equally most of the players are recruited, employed by the clubs. By employing the sports sector, creating employment, we are contributing to the GDP of the country. In Harabe Prosperity Plan, we are advocating for sport professionalization. We are fortunate that Netball Namibia agreed that they go with us to pilot this professionalization project to start with them to see what should we actually have in place if we want to escalate it to the rest of the sport codes. Now MTC, for you, you might be giving money, but for us, you are creating an opportunity, you are enabling the citizen to capacitate and take care of themselves. I remember when I started some time ago, there was a time where we were very active with women football. And then in between, we could not find a sponsor for the league. You know what the ladies told me in the absence of a league? We had about three to four girls that got pregnant. So sport is not only an enabler, it also rescues us from things that are not supposed to be. That's why I'm saying that MTC, you are creating an opportunity, you are capacitating the nation, and for that we thank you. Now moving into the sharpshooter segment of today's show. The RMB and Prosperity Life Africa Triathlon Cup will be held on Saturday in Swakopmund, with the competition starting and ending at the Mola. The Namibia Triathlon Federation successfully hosted the Africa Cup in Swakopmund last April, which attracted athletes from more than 10 countries. Rual Spannenberg speaks about the weekend or rather speaks about the event in the video that is about to come up. So have a listen to what he has to say. 
And we are back with Rolf Brown Thunberg, the president of the Namibia Triathlon Federation. I must say, quite an interesting conversation as somebody who's watched triathlon from the sidelines for a while now. <laughs> Well, the challenge is on. You're going to be judge doing me. one soon. <laughs> I mean, I hope so. I hope so. If the right, triathlon there we go. If she does one, we will pay her entry for her. <laughs> wow, that's enticing. That's enticing. Belotus Mark Skull. Okay, so tell us a little bit more about that day, that day that I right. now have free entry to. Okay, great. So, Swakopmund Moon that day will become a triathlon hub. So, the entire event will be situated around the uh, main beach, the Mola area, all right? So we'll be swimming in the Mola. Um, we will be using the parking lot in front of the under Mola um, holiday apartments. That parking lot will become a triathlon village for the day. Uh, there'll be tents, there'll be food, there'll be drinks, um, mm -hmm. music, a big screen TV, you guys are there. Um, there's MCs coming in, so it's gonna be a fun vibe, all right? So that is where everything's gonna happen. That's where the transitions are. The bike course runs into town. It actually goes all the way down Velvicha Street past the dome and back. We close off the entire road. So no cars, just bicycles. The run is on the promenade, Strand Street and the promenade. That is also closed off for the day. It's just for runners. So the, the whole vibe of the event will be, will be around um, triathlon, based around triathlon. Now obviously hosting an event of this magnitude is um, the world triathlon bodies take it very serious in terms of safety. And Swakopmund as a town has really, really um, put their hand forward to make Swakopmund a annual uh, destination for triathlon. And there's big dreams and plans for triathlon in, in, in Swakopmund. And we, we're grateful to the city of Swakopmund for making this possible. I mean, it's, it's, it's inconveniencing the um, uh, residents, but I mean, Swakop is a happy town. They're happy to, to, um, to contribute. Now, we've got some excellent people coming down. I'm sure we're going to be talking about that a bit later. Um, but I, I ask people to come and have a look and just see what it's all about. We're trying to put up as professional a show as possible. And just come and give it a go. You don't need to be a serious triathlete to participate. Okay, fantastic. So tell me a little bit more for those of us who are, who are watching or those of the viewers who are watching who might be interested, but persuade them a little, tell them a little bit, what keeps you coming back to triathlon? It's just a healthy lifestyle. It's, it, um, you know what, I've, I've cycled, I've, I ran, and I don't really want to ditch the other sports because, I mean, they've got their place. It's, it's they're doing great things. But triathlon brings, brings a lot of balance, you know. It's, um, unfortunately, as I got older and I got kids, I don't have time to cycle 16 or 20 we uh, hours a, a week anymore. For triathlon, I can cycle less because the distance is shorter. Neither can I run a... 21 or a 42k um, once a week. I just don't have the time. For triathlon, I only need to run five kilometers. Um, same for swimming. I only need to swim either 750 meters or 325. It just depends on um, on on, on um, what event I sign up for. Um, so it, it's manageable, and that that is what people need to realize. There's a distance for every ability. Um, so. It is a healthy sport, a balanced sport. Mm -hmm. So if anybody wants to get in touch with you guys to take part in this yes. event, how are they going to do All right. that? All right, so the NTF's got a we website, www.ntf.go.na. We've got accredited coaches that's listed on the, um, on the website. You're welcome to, to, to either contact ourselves, our details are on there, or um, contact one of the coaches and come for a tryout, you know, just have a chat, see what it's all about. Come to the event and chat to us about it. Um, I'm sure you'll get hooked uh, very quickly. Yeah, I mean, I must say, the moment they come out of the water, I'm already like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, the future plans for the Triathlon Federation. Obviously, right. you guys are growing. Yes. But what, what does that future growth look like? All right. So. We've come to realize about three or four years ago, um, there is a lot of opportunity for Namibians in triathlon. Um, and we haven't fully harnessed that. Look, we've, we've always had good triathletes. I mean, most recently, Divan de Plouet has been to Commonwealth Games. We had John Paul Berger, uh, Drikus Kutsia, um, Doki Bombosh, uh, Charmaine Shannon. Um, there's, there's, a, there's a host of great athletes we had. Uh, but it was sort of if the system let them down, you know? It, yeah. it got expensive for these guys to go and travel to race in other countries. 
So we thought, you know what, let's bring the races to them. Yeah. Um, and we've got a big focus in terms of juniors. Like I said, we'll be sending a team to the Junior Commonwealth Games this year, and we're very excited. We, mm -hmm. we do think we've got some very good athletes. And we, we, we've got a system in place where we're growing their kits. So hopefully in five or six years from now, we've got professional um, triathletes. Um, yeah. And the opportunity is there. And that, that's the mandate and that's the plan. But on the social level, NTF is really trying to grow the sport. Um, we want to make it a mainstream sport. There's no reason why we shouldn't have a massive vintage triathlon or Swakopmin triathlon once a year um, and attract 100 to 200 social people just to come out and have fun. Mm -hmm. And then obviously long term, uh, there's plans we would like to host events like the Ironman. Um, I don't think that is far off. That is in our reach. It's almost yeah. there. And I think that'll just change the sport of triathlon forever. Okay, fantastic. And would you be able to expand a little, bit, a little bit more about triathlon's place on the world stage? You know, we've now sort of carved a place for ourselves in athletics with Christine Boma, Beatrice Masilingi, um, cycling with Tristan and all these guys. Um, what is triathlon's place on the world stage in Namibia? All right, so triathlon is a sport worldwide has taken a remodeling. They're really trying to make triathlon attractive. So the beautiful thing about triathlon is that it's so concentrated in one area is um, spectators can actually see the whole thing and not just when, when somebody goes past. So they've made triathlon as a sport much more attractive to, to the, um, the viewers out there. Um, unfortunately, we are maybe well, three or four years off from having a, a superstar on the, on the, um, on the, on the circuit. We, we were well on our way last year. Unfortunately, a few things, some athletes uh, changed. Uh, well, a few things happened to athletes, uh, but we've, we've quickly recouped. And I think three or four years from now, we'll have some very good athletes on the, um, uh, on the, on the, on the world circuits. Okay, fantastic. And then second to last question. I wanted to make that the last question, but I'm enjoying this conversation. Um, so tell us a little bit about um, the history of triathlon, where exactly does it come from? When exactly did it start? Um, because for a lot of people, it may seem like it just kind of s fell out of the sky, but obviously it has a long track in Namibia. Could you tell us a little bit about the history of triathlon? In triathlon Namibia? in Namibia is actually a very old sport. It's, it's been around for, for a long, long time. I've, I've been trying to dig through the history to, to um, find some information, but I mean, in the, in the um, 80s, Namibia had a massive, massive triathlon following. And a few people know, but we actually um, hosted Triathlon Cups, Africa Cups, all the way back then. It, it used to be at uh, Marienthal at the Hard Up Dam. Um, and I mean, um, athletes like Toki Bombosh, um, th those guys were the local legends at the time. And few people know, but Toki uh, just came short of uh, qualifying for the Olympics way back then. So Triathlon came, came a, uh, has been coming for a long time, and only, only the last three years have we sort of made it mainstream. Um, and I think we, we're riding the crest of the wave now. It's, it's a good time to be a triathlete. Okay, fantastic. And then we have a, tra a tradition on Flex where we share health and health tips with one another. Do you have a health tip to share with our viewers? Mm, yes. Get up early, watch the sunrise. <laughs> I think there's a, there's a lot of value just in our busy lives to get up early and make some time for yourself. Uh, life seems to run away for us uh, these days. But before we, before we close off, mm -hmm. I want to add that uh, we've got over 40 pro athletes coming to this event. And I might be wrong, I might be right, but I think this is the single largest event in terms of pro athlete attendance. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by pro athlete is nobody from Namibia. It's all professional athletes from across the world. We've got athletes coming in from America, from Japan, Kazakhstan, Europe, um, uh, Great Britain. Um, obviously, there's an African, South Africa, Mozambique, and all of that. But at the moment, we're standing in 40 pro athletes that signed up that will all be racing on that day. And something tells me that they actually wake up and watch the sunrise. Of course, they train. They train that time <laughs> of the morning. <laughs> I must say, there is nothing like jogging at the sunrise. No, or swimming. Like, yeah, try I swimming mean, that time of the morning. I should, I should. Yeah. Now, I've, now I've got a lot of things to do. I have to go swim, I have to go Running, cycle, yeah, go I need cycling. to go. 
I need to go get my affairs in order. What exactly do you need for registration? Nothing. We've already signed you up. Just give us your full name and, and, and date of birth and you're signed up. Do, do I get like a... We will get somebody to accompany you the entire event. Do I, right. do I get like a like a little badge that says like honorary guest or something? <laughs> we can do we right. can do that. Oh yeah. <laughs> Woo! Okay. <laughs> so obviously there's a lot of fun and my golden badge at the Africa Triathlon Cup. So if you're not a, a triathlon athlete, triathlete yourself, uh, do be sure to check it out. It is a a lot of fun to watch a triathlon, I can tell you from personal experience. Thank you so much, Ro, for Thank joining us. Much. Do you have anything else you'd like to tell our No, nah, just, just come out. If you're only a cyclist, find a running buddy or a swimming buddy or phone us, we'll find one for you. Or if you just want to come out and have coffee and have a look at us, just, just come around for a chat. Come and enjoy the day. The more people we've got there, the bigger the event grows, the happier the sponsors are, the bigger we can go next year. Okay, great. And the cooler it is that I have a special guest badge. All right, we're going to be holding it to, uh, <laughs> to this, so uh, bets on it. I'm going to be holding you to this. <laughs> great, so we still have a jam-packed show for you. Thank you so much for joining us for the interview segment. We will be right back with the rest of Flex. Thank you. Muscle and joint pain should not be the reason you can't perform at your best. Norflex Gel. It also shouldn't be the reason you miss that important deadline. Norflex Gel. Or miss Nor those precious moments that matter the most. Norflex Gel. Norflex Gel penetrates through the skin, numbing the area and relieving pain and inflammation. Norflex Gel is now available in the pharmacy aisle and in supermarkets. New Norflex Gel Fort is available for stronger anti-inflammatory action. Beat the pain with Norflex Gel. Now heading into the Game Changers segment of today's show, the Brave Warriors of Namibia will face Cameroon on Friday in the Africa Cup of Nations qualifier match. Colin Benjamin's squad will go up against the Regobot Songs Chargers. We caught up with Warriors defenders Ryan Yambe and Engero Katua. So have a listen to what they had to say ahead of Friday's match. The last time you played was uh, World Cup qualifiers. You did not play against Burundi. Yeah. You're playing against Cameroon. They are yeah. considered African giants. What do you feel about that? How do you feel? Um, I think it's a big opportunity for everyone in the team to showcase their capabilities, especially against playing against a team like Cameroon. You know, it's a, it's a massive team in Africa. As you said, um, I think everyone's looking forward to the challenge. Okay, how, how is the mood in the camp? Very good, very positive. You know, uh, more taking information from the coach and everyone's just trying to be as positive as they can be playing against Cameroon. Hi, hi, Gero, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? I'm good. Uh, you played for the under-20 national team, Kosafa. You helped that team go to AFCON for the first time. You played Kosafa last year for the national team. Now you are back for Afghan qualifiers against Cameroon. Tell me about the experience of being here. Uh, it's a very good experience being around professional footballers. Uh, you learn more from them. And I'm very happy to, to have gotten this chance. And I'm very confident going in the game against Cameroon. How are the preparations going? Uh, the preparations are going very well so far. What do you expect from the match? Um, like you're playing against the likes of Vincent, them big names. Uh, it's going to be a very tough game. It's going to be a very physical game, but I'm I'm prepared to push harder than ever before, than I've ever pushed before. If I get the chance to. Okay. Thank you. Up next is Ari Hochert with International Sports News in Globetrotter. Don't move an inch.
Good day everyone, time for international sports news, starting off with cycling news, um, and it is the Volta a Catalunya that started in Spain. It's going to be over seven stages, most of the best riders in the world are participating in the tour, and uh, it was uh, stage two that is concluded. It was Giulio Sissoni, he's from Italy, that won. It was a tough stage in the mountains, it was uh, up to three riders in the end, and he won it in a sprint to the line, although it was uphill, but it was still a sprint, and uh, he won it in four hours, 13 minutes and 37 seconds. In the same time, in second place, uh, Primoz Roglic of Slovenia, and then in third position, Remco Evenpool of Belgium. So uh, it is also Louis Mankies of South Africa that's participating in this tour. He finished the 28th on the second stage. General classifications at the moment um, is that Primoz Roglic is leading at the moment a combined time of 8 hours 1 minute and 38 seconds for the two stages. Remco Evenpool second 6 seconds behind him and then it is Gilo Sissoni of Italy. He is in third position also 6 seconds behind. Southern African interest, Louis Mankis, is the 27th overall at the moment. He is at 2 minutes and 50 seconds behind the leader. The third stage will be over 180 kilometers, also in the mountains again, two big climbs, and it will end at La Molina, a very steep climb for the riders. So that is stage three of the Volta a Catalunya in Spain. Moving on to soccer news, it's related to Manchester United Soccer Club that's on sale by the owners Glacier family and uh, it was prospective owners that was given till Wednesday this week uh, to make a revised bid. It seems like the first bids that they made was not high enough. It's understood that the owners, the Glacier families, the family that owns the club for 18 years now, they want between 5 to 6 billion Pounds. Um, so that is a big number for them to ask for the club and it is understood that uh, some of the offers have been between four and five billion pounds. It's also that uh, uh, factor that uh, Manchester United has been doing better the last two months um, and uh, it was uh, since Eric Ten Hag took over they did uh, better with better results so maybe that pushed up the price. At the moment the favourites to buy the club is Sir Jim Ratcliffe, he is from United Kingdom and also consortium from Qatar. Continuing international sports news with golf news, um, it is the WGC Dell Technologies World Match Play Championships that will start now and uh, it is the draw that was made known. Um, there are 16 groups of four players each in the group. Uh, the four players in each group will play round robin and uh, the winner of the group will go through to the round of 16, the last round of 16. Top three seeded players on the world rankings, all three playing in the tournament, um, it is Scotty Scheffler, uh, John Rahm also and Rory McIlroy and it will be uh, of course single matches against uh, one opponent it is not uh, trying to win a tournament over four rounds uh, like normal. Southern African interest just one player playing it is Christian Besaidnot from South Africa he's in group 10 and uh, also in that group will be Tony Finau also Kurt Kitayama and Adrian Moronk and uh, that is Christian Besaidnot playing also in the world match play. Closing off today's international sports news with tennis news. It's the Miami Open that uh, continues or started this week. Uh, that was after the Indian Welsh that uh, just finished the last week. Most of the players, all the players that played in the Indian Welsh tournament also in action this week. First seed in the women's draw will be Iga Swiatek again of Poland and also defending champion of Indian Welsh Elena Rabakina will also be in action. 16 seeds already out of the tournament in the first round. It's Anna Karolina Schmidlova. She's from Slovakia. She was beaten by Victoria Tomova of Russia and the score 7 5 6 2. And also Elise Merchants of Belgium. She beat Alicia Parks of the USA by 6 1 and 6 4. And uh, on the main side of the draw, Carlos Alcaraz, defending champion from Indian Welsh. He is in the tournament. He's number one seed. And uh, absent again will be Novak Djokovic again because the tournament is in the United States. He's not vaccinated and he's not allowed into the USA and the second seat for the main side will be Stefanos Tsitsipas of Greece. That's international sports news for today. I hope you have a great sport day and we talk again tomorrow. Goodbye.
that brings us to the end of today's show. Catch us again tomorrow, same time, same place.